All right, prisoners, we heard many of you thought our last survival protocol mission was too simple and not filled with enough action to keep you awake. So this time around, we decided to up the ante a bit by including some optional objectives into your stack for you to complete. And normally we would give you some extra time to complete them along with your main objective, but you've shown yourself to be so capable that I don't think it'll be necessary. Now you better hop to it as your time starts now. Hello everyone, Professor Scaly here, and welcome to the alternate R6C3 level guide. As always, we're starting off with your loadout, and for this mission, I like to bring in with me a bio tracker, a mine deployer, a seafoam launcher, and then any sentry of my choice. The reason why I like the bio tracker is pretty much the same as always, just being able to tag enemies with it, gathering information. Very few naturally sleeping enemies in this level, but there'll be a lot of them coming after us due to the warden survival protocol itself. So being able to tag them and deal with them a lot more easily or know what route they're taking to get to us can help conserve quite a few of our resources. As for the mind deploy on the seafoam launcher, we're going to be running around a lot in this mission, going from place to place, not really holding our ground in an area for all that long. So we're going to want to bring tools with us that we can use on the go, which is why I like mines and seafoam instead of having multiple sentries, because there's a lot of doors in this mission that we could just simply run next to whenever a wave does spawn in, shut it behind us, mine it so it'll blow up most of the enemies, seafoam it a little bit if we need more time so all the enemies can actually pile up on the door before it breaks down, and we just have to kill the few enemies who do survive the mine explosion and then just continue going on to wherever we're heading to next. As for the sentry of your choice, not really going to utilize this a whole lot depending on your playstyle. I typically get very little use out of this because I'm running around so often, but there will be a few moments where we do have to hold our ground in a set area for a lengthy duration, and in those situations, it's nice to have a little bit of extra firepower with a sentry. Again, you could go for whatever type of sentry you want to. I typically will lean more towards a burst sentry or maybe a sniper sentry, but heck, the auto sentry or the shotgun sentry can also get some good work done. Just make sure you are positioning it according to its strengths, that way it's actually utilizing itself efficiently and not just shooting once or twice and then basically nothing afterwards. Dropping down into level, you'll see that your main objective is a Warden Survival Protocol. Which means as soon as you drop into level and your feet hit the floor, a 2 minute timer is going to appear, which is how long you have until waves of enemies start spawning in, and then it will be replaced by a 30 minute timer, which is how long you have to wait until you can actually get to the final security door, make your way through it, and get to extraction and escape. So how you want to play this level, there's a few different ways you could go about it, but I like to play the fast and efficient route. I want to go from point A to point B to point C, etc. until I complete all the objectives in the level and make it to extraction. When I play through this mission, I will just run from area to area as quickly as I can. If I see boxes or lockers on the way, I will take a little bit of time to open them up to see if they have resources or useful consumables like seafoam grenades or lock melters in them, but I don't really look in every single nook and cranny to try to find all the resources as there's more than enough resources from start to finish in this level that you don't have to collect every single one of them. So as soon as I get into the mission, I will just start running ahead of me immediately. You can sort of follow the path you see my teammates taking if you want to. I'll go to the far northern end of the zone, or northeastern corner of the zone I guess I should say, where I'll find the security door to zone 169. This door is going to have a full team scan tied to it, and once I get into there, I will just make my way sort of towards the northern end of the zone, where I will be able to find another security door, this one specifically taking me to zone 170. This door is going to have a full team scan tied to it, but is also a blood door, so after you finish the scan, make sure you place a mine or two on the door, then open up, fall back a little bit, deal with the enemies, and once you kill them all, you can then quickly head into zone 170. Now inside of the zone, in the southeastern corner of it, you will be able to find the bulkhead door control that is tied to the main and overload objectives, however, we do not have a bulkhead key yet. So I'll just make my way north a little bit and then go to the far western side where I will find a security door to zone 171. This door is going to have a full team scan and inside of that zone you will be able to find a pretty fair amount of resources so this is a good point to actually look around a bit and grab them as well as your very first bulkhead key which you need in order to progress further into the mission even if you are only going for the main objective. 
So go around here, grab resources, get the bulkhead key, and when you're good, you can then go on ahead and leave, make your way back to the bulkhead door control, plug the key into it, and do the scan for either your main objective or for the overload objective. Which, if you're someone who's only interested in the main objective portion of this guide, feel free to jump to the timestamp you see on screen. Everybody else, though, we're going to go up to the far northern end of the zone where we will find the bulkhead door to zone 305. When we get there, it's just simply an open door, no scary thing tied to it, and we could just go on ahead, head inside, and get started on our objective. And upon entering into zone 305, you'll see your overall objective is to find a specific terminal, which will always be in the same spot inside zone 305 itself, and put a special command into it. So once I get in here, I just make my way to the northern end where I'll be able to find a big room that has the terminal in it. When I get there, I'll usually shut my C from the door behind me. Then I'll put the command to the terminal, which will cause a giant full team scan to appear. This scan is going to take quite a while to finish, so you will have to hold out here. Once you finish this scan, though, your overall objective is completed, and it's going to do two different things. First thing is it's going to unlock the security door to zone 306. The second thing is it's going to initiate a tank error alarm so every so often, I don't know the exact amount of time, but it's a pretty lengthy amount of time between waves, a single tank is going to spawn in and you have to deal with this for the rest of the level. So as soon as you finish the scan, grab any nearby resources if there are any, then go back to the security door to zone 306, which you can't possibly miss. And inside zone 306, there will be a fair amount of resources, a sleeping tank somewhere inside of the zone, which you might be able to avoid him or you might have to kill him, depends on exactly where your resources and your second bulkhead key is, which that's the other important thing you need to grab is that second bulkhead key. So I'll go into the zone. There are two doors we can utilize, so feel free to shut them, mine them, and see from them behind you and deal with that tank as quickly as you can, unless if he's in the very far back end of the zone, in which case, again, you might be able to avoid just leaving him alive and not actually killing him. But once you got to the resources and your second bulkhead key, it is time to skedaddle because you need to get going on with the rest of the main objective, because around this point, the infectious fog in the level might be rising up a little bit, which isn't too much of an issue as long as you're being fast and efficient. Another reason why I like to play quickly in this level when I can. Once you've gotten everything, leave this sector, go back to the bulkhead door control from earlier, plug the key into it, and do the scan for your main objective, and that will unlock the bulkhead door to zone 172. And since we're back to the main objective route, welcome back to those of you who jumped ahead to this moment. So at this point, we are now going to the security door to zone 172, which is just a little northeast of the bulkhead door control itself. This door is going to have a full team scan tied to it. People who are doing just a main objective run, I should also preface that there are doors along the main route that do not unlock until specific time intervals with that timer at the top of your screen. However, I do not know which of these doors it is off the top of my head, nor are they time for it, because I pretty much only do prisoner efficiency runs, which if you go for the optional objectives, by the time you get to these security doors, they should always be unlocked and ready for you to open, aside from maybe the very last security door in the level. If you do happen to make it to a security door and it's not unlocked yet, I would just recommend look around, grab resources that are nearby, and then once you know the door unlocks, you could just continue further on into the level. But when it comes to the security door, like I said, the one to zone 172, this is going to just simply be a full team scan. And inside of the zone, the only thing noteworthy is the fact that this is the only zone in the entire level, aside from technically the one in overload, that has naturally sleeping enemies inside of it. There's going to be a fair amount of regular strikers and shooters, but that should be it. So make your way through, deal with the enemies with melee best you can, grabbing resources along the way, and just follow through the zone until you get to the far eastern side of it, where you'll find the security door to zone 173. This door is going to have a full team scan tied to it, and inside of zone 173, this is a fairly large zone, and a few different things we're going to want to take note of. First of all, the bulkhead door control and the door to your secondary objective will be located inside of the zone. The bulkhead door control itself will be to the far northwestern side of the zone. The bulkhead door, though, will be towards the middle point to the northeastern side of the zone. However, we do not have a bulkhead key on hand, so we're going to want to go to the far eastern side of the zone to the security door to zone 174, which is just going to be a full team scan. In there will be a fair amount of resources, as well as your third bulkhead key. The terminal is actually in the southern end of the first room, so feel free to use that to ping the location of everything if need be. And once you have the bulkhead key, as well as any the resources you want, run all the way back to the western side of the zone, go to the northern end where you find the bulkhead door control, plug the key into it, and do the secondary scan. And I'll also mention that even if you are someone who's just doing the main objective, highly recommend you do this for a reason we will specify in just a little bit. But once you finish that scan, you can then go back to the eastern side and go north up to the bulkhead door to zone 250, which is just going to be an open bulkhead door, no scan or anything tied to it. 
And upon entering into zone 250 itself, you'll see your secondary objective is to find three power cells and bring them back to the generator cluster, which is in the room with you. And that very first power cell will be located somewhere inside zone 250, as well as a fair amount of resources, as well as a fog turbine. And again, if you are only doing the main objective, I recommend you at least come into the zone because not only can you grab the resources from in here, but this will actually unlock two other security doors later down the main route, specifically the ones in zone 176 and zone 177. So once you head into here, if you're just doing the main objective, you could just grab the resources and then make your way back to the southern end to the security door to zone 175. Everybody else though, grab the power cell in here, plug it to a generator cluster. If you want to, you could bring the fog turbine with you, but I'll be completely honest. I typically ignore the fog turbine as long as I'm having a decent run because the infectious fog won't be that much of an issue until pretty much the end of the mission as long as I don't get held up by anything along the way. Once you've gotten everything you need though from in here, exit the bulkhead door and go to the far southern end where, like I said, you'll find the security door to zone 175. This door is going to have a class 1 alarm tied to it though, and as you can see with the map overlay, there are a few different locations enemies could spawn from, and the setup for this door doesn't really matter all that much. If you want to, you can have the outer door shut or you could just simply leave them open. What's more so important though are the two doors that lead directly into your room. These you definitely want to make sure are shut and mined if you want to go on ahead and see foam them as well, just so everything from the class 1 alarm itself will blow up, as well as potentially any enemies that might spawn in from the protocol itself if you happen to time it well. But once you're good to go, activate the alarm, do the full team scan. As soon as it's finished, you can then access the checkpoint scan, which I recommend you do just right away. Once the scan is finished, it will automatically open up the door. Then you can head inside zone 175 itself, and this is a fairly large zone, and in here there will be three different security doors. There will be a security door to the far west and to the far east, which would take you to zone 176 and 177, which at this point you want to head into those areas no matter what type of run it is you're doing. Because if you're going for a main objective only run, you have a fair amount of time to kill before you can actually leave the level. So go on ahead and go into those zones and look around and grab resources and also utilize nearby doors with your mines and seafoam to deal with the waves more easily. For those of you going for a prisoner efficiency run, you're still going to be heading in here to grab those resources, but also because the second and third power cells you need for your secondary objective are located in these two zones. So I usually go to the west into zone 176, I believe is the one over there. I'll grab the power cell and then a few resources. Once I have them, I will leave and go back to the security door zone 175 and drop off the power cell there. Then I'll make my way to the far eastern side of the zone to the security door 177. This door, just like 176, is just going to be a full team scan. Then same thing, go in there, grab the resources. Terminal is immediately at the beginning of the zone, so it's really easy to use this to figure out where the power cell and resources are. And once I have the power cell from in here, as well as the resources I want, backtrack to zone 175 security door, grab the second power cell that you left from earlier, then just make your way back up north to the secondary sector. Now, while you're doing all this, keep in mind waves of enemies are going to be spawning in, strikers, shooters, probably a few giant waves here and there, and you'll also have a tank or two you'll have to deal with by this point, which whenever you hear that tank roar in the distance, which you can tell it's it because it's quite a bit different from the regular strikers and giants you've heard up to this point, I just say look for a good area to fight them. Honestly, the hardest part about the second half of this mission is just simply dealing with those tanks, although if you're doing main only run, you don't have to worry about them. And the best way to deal with them in my eyes is just get into an area where you have plenty of room to split up so you can actually shoot them from behind as he's turning around and trying to whip your teammates, but also try to stay near some doors so if a wave of enemies happens to spawn in while you're halfway through dealing with a tank, you could quickly forget about the tank, run over to the door, shut it, mine it, sea foam it, and then you can let the mine deal with most of the enemies and then just split up again afterwards and deal with the tank and try to kill it as quickly as you can. But going back a little bit since we got a little sidetracked there, once you have both the power cells, again, go to the northern sector into the secondary area, zone 250. Once you get in there, feel free to plug in both of your power cells, and once you do, you can leave immediately because this generator cluster is just going to cause the lights to go out and then the level will be plunged into pitch black darkness for the remainder of it as the lights will never come back on. But there's no alarm or even any scans you have to do in here to actually complete it. So as I said, as soon as all three power cells are plugged in, grab any nearby resources and make your way back down south into zone 175. If you're going for a prisoner efficiency run around this point, you're probably getting pretty close to the timer at the top of your screen being at the zero minute mark. In which case, you're just going to want to then go to the southeastern end of zone 175 where you find a security door to zone 178. This door is going to have a full team scan tied to it. And once again there, just make your way down south where you will eventually find the security door to zone 179. 
This door will automatically open up once the timer hits zero. So if you still have a little bit of time to kill, utilize the doors in the zone with you, look around, grab resources, prepare to deal with another tank as they usually will be one you have to deal with right before you can make it to extraction, which highly recommend make sure you kill that tank as you don't want to come with you to extraction. But assuming you were able to deal with the tank and all the other enemies efficiently, and you can get that scan all the way to 100%, you are done and have completed alternate R6 C3. And that's all there is to it. Alternate R6 C3 vastly improves upon the Warden Survival Protocol objective that we first saw back in Alternate R5 B4. Having optional objectives to work on while you wait for the timer to count down makes it so there's a whole lot less twiddling your thumbs in some random corner protected by a line of sentries as you wait for the next security door to actually unlock. It's even better that the optional objectives have permanent effects on the rest of the level to make things even more challenging for you and your teammates. As always though, thank you for watching this video all the way to the very end. I do hope that I was able to provide you with some assistance in beating this mission. If you have any tips or tricks this level that you would like to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you would like to say, please do let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and if you want to join my community, there's a link to my Discord down in the description, as well as some other links you might be interested in. Among those links being one to the official GTFO merch store, which, as always, I highly recommend you check out if you're a fellow GTFO enthusiast and you're looking to pick up some sweet merch. Until next time, it's the season of spring, so it's a great time to start cleaning house, just like you clean out the complex of all those sleepers. And hopefully, I'll see all you wonderful people in the next video.